But if you don't believe it, it'll never happen. If you don't believe the word to change your life, it'll never happen. If you don't believe that you can have everything in the book, guess what? It'll never happen. All the promises are what? In him are what? Okay, well, you can say amen all you want to. But if you don't believe that all the promises in him are yes and amen, you'll never receive the promise. Because the promises are received or obtained by what? Faith. I'm not talking faith. about faith. I'm talking about spiritual warfare. Last week we started talking about spiritual warfare training. Did you get your notes on that? Amen. And we dealt with we dealt with the weapons of our warfare, not calling their minded through God, pulling out a stronghold. Then I began to give you the four angelic ranks of Satan's army. We talked about last week principalities. We said principalities deal with government, deals with spheres of influence. They control what goes on in nations, cities, towns, because they're, they're controlling the people many times that are in authority that are the decision makers, or we call them gatekeepers. Yes. People that sit at the gates and make decisions. So we talked about principalities. Right. Then we said that they give instructions to powers. And we said powers are spirits that deals with the mind. Yes. And we began to deal with certain issues that powers are responsible for. We, we talked about the, the mental, telepathy, mental illness, hallucinations, nightmare, all that stuff. Yes. So you have to get the CD. I do want to give you a scripture dealing with principalities because I didn't throw this out last week. Go to 1 Timothy. I'm going to put a cap on this. And then we're going to start talking about something that will hinder us in our warfare and our walk with God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1. And, and I'll just read it real fast. It says, first of all, then I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgiving be made on our behalf. This is Apostle Paul. For all men. He's saying pray for all men. Right? Yes. For kings and for all who are in what? Authority. So that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all uh, godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So Paul is saying, make sure that you lift up those dignitaries, those people that are in the positions of authority, because if we can pray for them, we can get God to move, and it'll make our journey and our life more, more uh, feasible. It'll be smoother. Amen. But when we don't pray for those in authority, we just say, well, they're just wicked, and you know they're going to do what they want to do. Then it allows Satan to just run wild in a nation, in a state. Amen. In North Carolina Amen. And do what he wants to do I believe there is serious warfare Going on in the realm of the spirit Right now Because our legislators have made a stand And, and all of Satan uh, Imps and his cohorts Are rising up And everybody's focusing on North Carolina And see what happens when you make a definitive stand They're saying what we're not going to do Movie companies are pulling out. Uh, Pepsi Cola is threatening uh, North Carolina. The plays that used to come to, to the uh, auditorium are not coming back. And, and now you got all the big wheels, Apple and uh, Google and Facebook CEOs um, threatening and shock um, North Carolina, putting pressure on our governor. And it's like, this is unreal. This is unreal. You, you know we're in a warfare when all of these people that are supposed to be intelligent and, and, and founded corporations that are worth billions are putting pressure on a state to allow grown men to go in women's bathrooms. The, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's no rights. All the rights are intact. And so North Carolina in particular, are in, we're in a real strong battle right now. It's almost like we're dreaming. It's almost like this can't be real, but that is how low our nation has sunk to in the last eight years. That, that is where we are, where we find ourselves. And if the body of Christ does not collide with the spirit that is trying to dictate how we conduct our lives, then the enemy is going to get the victory. Amen. There has to be a collision in the realm of the spirit against these. So it's not just going to happen by osmosis. Oh, we, that ain't going to happen. Well, if you don't rise up 
and begin to do battle with these principalities that are trying to call the shot. Oh, it very well will happen. So we may as well just come to reality and say, man, this is we. If we never pray, if we've never engaged, we've got to engage now. It's stuff going on now that we've never dealt with. That those spirits that I've been teaching on that are being released, they're being released and they're reinforcing those spirits that have been here. And, and so this battle is intensifying. And if you can't war past yourself, we'll never get anything accomplished. Some people can't get out of your own way to get engaged in the battle. Okay. So when we're dealing with these principalities. Go over to 2 Timothy. I can't stay there. I would like to, but I, I have an agenda today. If I'm going to keep track. Second okay. Timothy one and seven. Okay. I know the scripture. Like my scripture don't want to come up now. Uh, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a what? Sound mind. Sound mind. No, I quoted it. Okay. Let me read it from the NASB. <laughs> For God has not given us a spirit of timidity but of power and love and discipline. Without discipline, there is no power. Amen. A lot of people trying to walk in power, but they don't have any discipline. I'm talking about self-discipline. Self-discipline is the launching pad for power. If you can't govern yourself, you'll never walk in power. And there's too many people in the kingdom that needs babysitters to make sure that they walk the walk. How many tired of babysitting people? You want to see people walk this walk because they love God and it is in them to do so. Amen. So he said God has not given us a spirit of timidity, right? right. But of power, love, love power, and self-discipline. Well, I'm saying self-discipline because God not going to discipline you. You got to discipline yourself. Amen. And if you can't govern your own life, you'll never walk in power. Yeah. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about fear. Fear is it's a spirit that comes and it grips hold of people and it can paralyze you. Let me, let me give you a couple definitions of fear before we get into this. From the Webster's Dictionary, he says, fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous and likely to cause pain. Is that not fear? People worried about stuff that they may never encounter. I'm going to read it again. He says, an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is in danger, is dangerous, likely to cause pain. Another definition, he said, it's a feeling of anxiety concerning the outcome of something or the safety and well-being of someone. You get anxious about something that you really don't know how it's going to turn out. So what are you doing? You're losing rest, losing peace, losing sleep about something that may never materialize. Anxiety, heart palpitating about stuff. You, you'll be sitting there, and all of a sudden, your heart will start palpitating. You'll, you'll be anxious. For what? Right. I don't know. And what happens? What you do? You take a deep breath, and your heartbeat settles back down. Anxiety speeds your heart up. People, what, people don't know why they get anxiety. They're panicking about something. You think it's natural just to sit around panicking? You're worried about something that you don't have any control over, and it may not materialize. Yeah. Sitting there. Anxiety is terrible. Yeah, is. I had it one time. I, I didn't even know what it was. We were sitting in a restaurant with, some, with our pastors and some friends, and all of a sudden it felt like I was having a heart attack or like somebody had drove a, a pickup truck over my chest, and I couldn't breathe, and I'm sitting there binding a heart attack. Death went outside, and I'm like, Lord, what is this? So I went to the doctor. They said, you had an anxiety attack. I'm like, why am I anxious? But I, I know that was when I was in school, working another job, and, and passion. I had a lot going on. But it, it'll, it'll make you feel like you're dying. Yeah. And there's nothing that they can do but tell you to relax. Yeah. Yeah. I can't stay there. Yeah. Fear in the Greek. Fear in the Greek is delos, D-E-I-L-O-S, delos. And it means to dread. It means to be timid. It means to be faithless. Ouch. When you're in fear, you're not in faith. So the Greek word uh, delos, it says it means to be in dread, to be timid, and to be faithless. 
because I cannot be faithful or full of faith if I'm, if I'm in fear. Mm -hmm. So to have fear means that it is the absence of faith. So people that are in this fear-driven life, they don't have faith. You can't have faith and fear at the same time. Now, will there be moments of fear? Yes, but I'm talking about living a life that is, is habitually filled with fear. Paranoia, yes, but you're always thinking the worst. You're always expecting something to happen. That right there is proof that that is the absence of faith. You can't stay there. Let me read something to you. Go well. Go to Hebrews eleven and six, and then I'll read this to you. Hebrews eleven and six. You should know how to. You should be able to quote that. You should be able to quote the first six verses in Hebrews eleven anyway. Amen. But Hebrews eleven and six says that without faith, it is impossible to what? Please. Please. Hold on. That we, we can't rush through that. It didn't say get your stuff. <laughs> Because we tell people, if you ain't got faith, you can't get anything. No, the scripture says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. That, that's deep. Yeah. Because if I'm in fear, it means I'm not in faith, so I'm not pleasing God. Right. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he that come to him, talking about God, uh -huh. must believe that he is or that he exists. Uh -huh. And that he is a rewarder or numerator of those that diligently seek him, not occasionally seek him. If you seek him diligently with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole strength, then, then he'll reward you. But I need faith not only to pursue God, I need faith to please God. Amen. Because he said without faith, it's, it's impossible. I don't care how much you come to church. Amen. I don't care how much you sing. I don't care how much you shout. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that come to God must believe that first God exists. Amen. That he is Elohim. Yes. That he is Yahweh. That he exists.